Woo! Ah! That's tardy. That's tardy, alright? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're, we have a very special episode for you guys. Because this episode is more informative than it is about me drinking beer and you watching me drink beer. So this is more uh, for you. Um, I've said it many times. I'm not a beer nerd. But that's pretty relative. A lot of you subscribers are in a spectrum that is way more beer nerdy than I am. However, there is a lot of you that don't really know too much about beer. You know that it's enjoyable, you drink with friends, you have a good time, and that's about it. Which is great. That's great. However, I want to give you a little bit of information for those folks that are uh, maybe new to beer, maybe you don't know, you know, why am I even doing this channel in the first place? Why do I find beer interesting in the first place? We're going to talk through a lot of that right now. Um, however, before I get started, I really want to thank you guys for being loyal subscribers. We ended up giving a, a beer basket away um, last couple weeks. So we definitely want to continue to give you guys some cool stuff and beer stuff and, and everything. So, uh, you know, as we get more subscribers, as you share the love, as you share the word of this channel, then we're going to be doing a lot more giveaways for you guys. I'm asking you for your help to share um, this channel with other people. And I hope that this episode uh, can be a good platform to do that. So let's talk about beer. Now beer has four ingredients and that's, and you can add more ingredients to make you know different flavors and stuff like that, but the four core ingredients of a beer is you know the grain, right? So wheat, barley. The second ingredient is uh, the hops. That, um, that really that little bitter flavor that you get from the beer, that, that highlight of the beer. Uh, IPAs are, you know, have a ton more hops than, you know, something that, you know, maybe it's just a regular lager. The third ingredient is water. Uh, water is essential to life. Uh, and you can make the argument that so is beer. Um, and the way I like my water, it's when it's filtered through a brewery first. So, you know, everybody has their own water taste profiles. Mine is, you know, it has to be filtered through a brewery. And the last ingredient, the one that kind of breaks all those three elements together and creates the final version of beer is the yeast. So the yeast is this uh, little chemical organism that breaks up those sugars in the wheat and create the, the what makes beer, beer. Now beer, you know, there's two different types of beers. There are your lagers and your ales. Your lagers are your traditional, you know, you know, butt light, your pilsners that you get like in, in some cases in Germany. Now, ales typically have a little bit more malty profiles, uh, sometimes a lot more hoppy. There's a lot more variations in those, in, in my opinion. Um, and those are like the IPAs, the, the porters, you know, those types of beers. Um, now, you know, the difference between those two it, it's really one critical thing. It's it's on the yeast. So for a lager, the yeast, when they use for the fermenting, where it breaks out those little you know pieces of sugars from the, the wheat, uh, that happens uh, with a within the bottom of the fermenting and at colder temperatures. So lagers is a bottom uh, fermenting at colder temperatures. While ales, they're top fermented, so the, the yeast kind of stays in the top of the fermentation cycle. And they're done in like warmer temperatures, so typically around the 60 to 70 degree um, kind of uh, range, so Fahrenheit. Now, where does beer come from? How did it start? That's a, you know, pretty big, big ask, right? But what we do know is that, you know, in 5000 BC, that was the uh, first recipe of a documented brewing process. Now, you know, the beer, you know, beer, beer actually probably predates in the 10,000 BCs because that's when, you know, some archeologists have found some, you know, remains of the yeast and, and uh, you know, wheats and maybe some, some of the things that they use for the fermenting process. So there could be some predating back to the 10, like 10,000 BC, which is pretty, pretty old. But but the beer that we know today really happened in the Middle Ages. So uh, right around kind of the 11th to 12th century, that's when beer kind of became its form that you see today. Um, and 
you know, if you think about it, beer, those four ingredients that we talked about, the same ingredients go into making bread, right? So uh, back in the day, they had to figure out what could be a great way to bring those nutrients from a bread without having it spoil that often. Now beer became pretty essential when you wanted to feed, you know, nutrients to a boat full of people, right? So uh, they used it a lot for that. Um, now back in the day, in the Middle Ages, you know, monks uh, would actually be the, the brewmasters of, of today's times, right? So, you know, to now you go to a brewery and you see a guy that uh, has a lot of beard, which I guess maybe monks had a little bit of beard, and they're also balding, so I guess maybe there's not much difference. But anyways, let's get into the actual beer itself. Um, I, we're gonna be trying out four different uh, beers, uh, two ales and two lagers. All beers that we're gonna try today are all Texas beers. So uh, starting off with a German style Pilsner from what was before Sigma Brewing. Now they changed their name to Equal Parts Brewing. Uh, however, this still says Sigma. So this may be an antique. Maybe I shouldn't open this. I'll still open it. It's gonna be good. Um, so that's gonna be the first one, right? So this is uh, your, your traditional kind of, uh, you know what you may recognize as a beer. Uh, now there's a, uh, the, Shiner Bach from the, uh, the Spotzel Brewery, uh, also known as Shiner, they make a, a Bach, which a Bach is a, a dark lager. So these two beers here are you know, fermented at colder temperatures, so your, the crispness of the beer is gonna come out a little bit more. Now in our ale category, we're gonna try out uh, from Eureka Heights, this uh, Little Kicks, which is an IPA, uh, more specifically an oat cream IPA, so I'm guessing they use uh, some oats in the, you know, that first ingredient, right? And the last one here is from Eighth Wonder Brewing. Uh, Eighth Wonder is another big, big brewery here in Houston. That um, it, They make this one called the Rocket Fuel, which is a Vietnamese coffee porter. Um, Vietnamese coffee is delicious. Porters are delicious. When you combine them, you make this delicious, great Rocket Fuel. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and try these out. Um, this is not going to be a blind test because you know they are all different. We're gonna we're gonna know which one's which, uh, but we are going to be comparing them as we go along uh, through the process. So we're still going to put them in the flight glasses and try out, you know, figure out what what do I like most. Uh, and you should probably do the same at home and figure out what do you like most. Uh, so, ready or not, flight me, bro. All right, here we have our flight. Uh, we're going to start off with the lagers, then move on to our L's. Uh, however, we're going to start with the uh, German-style Pilsner, the lighter one here, uh, from Equal Parts Brewing, also known as Sigma. And now, this German Pilsner is a little bit lighter than when, than most, so um, and clearly not filtered at the end, so you can see the uh, the little haze to it. Um, but we'll see if it tastes kind of a, like a traditional German-style Pilsner. It's got that great. Uh, crisp finish. It kind of has like the, these floral notes. I really enjoy it. I think I've had something similar from a Mexican style lager that I've had from Eureka Heights. Now these floral notes that come out uh, make the beer taste a lot more enjoyable. And um, you know, I don't know if it's a, a true traditional German style Pilsner, but I really enjoy this particular one here. Um, however, let's, let's see how it compares to a, a little bit darker lager, right? A, a dark lager, that's a Bach from Shiner here. Okay, so you get the same crispness from this one, right? So that, that really crisp fl flavor, uh, you know, you get it here, but what, what this brings is a lot more of that maltiness. So you can taste the grain a little bit more. And in fact, because of that, you actually don't taste much of the hops on this one. So it's, it's a little less hoppy than this one here. Uh, I think the lighter body to this, the lighter malt, um, you can taste the hops a little bit more. Now, I enjoy the hops. Why not put more hops? Make it a hoppy lager. I like being hoppy. Now, let's say that you're, yeah, I don't know, at a campfire, you know, you're doing some s'mores, and you want something that's a little bit more flavorful, more malty. Um, why not go for this, right? Go for something like a Shiner Bach and uh, enjoy it, right? It's a little bit lighter, it's crisp. Why not? Go for it. Uh, we're gonna move on to the ales here. Check out the haziness this guy 
Uh, compared to this, a lot more hazier um, on this one here. My guess is because of the oats that are used in this IPA. Um, but we're, we're gonna see how this tastes. And wow, so this one's really interesting because the hops are are there. You taste them. However, they're not overpowering. Uh, that that creaminess from the oat uh, provides a really good balance. And sometimes IPAs um, they come at you, you know, full steam ahead with all the hops. The hoppiness, the bitterness, just comes at you. Now, you know, really your IPA, your preference. You're gonna see that different IPAs have different ways of working with the, that hop. And depending on the type of hop that you use will provide a different you know, style, a different uh, aroma. Um, and really that's what makes an IPA so great because you have so many varieties of hops that give different profiles, taste profiles to an IPA, uh, which is amazing. But I'm biased, I'm an IPA lover, so let's move on to the next one here. Um, this coffee porter, Vietnamese coffee porter to be more exact, from 8th Wonder. So um, let's give this one a shot. So really, off the top, you get the, the coffee notes straight from the aroma. But as you drink it, so the thing with Vietnamese coffee is it's, it's, it's very sweet. Vietnamese coffee is very sweet. Now what they've done here is you still get that profile from the coffee and the sweetness with the, the dark roasty malt, that's really, really good. I remember when I said, you know, what if uh, you're out in a campfire roasting some s'mores? To be honest, I don't know which one I would choose because this one has that sweetness that you want. You know, you're having a s'more and you're getting all that chocolatey good stuff from here. Um, you bite into it, you get that marshmallow and you give a, a sip of this. It's like a little, uh, you're, you're a kid. You're a kid again, drinking sweet stuff, eating sweet stuff. Yeah, why not go for a you know Vietnamese coffee porter? Now we've just tried four different types of beers that uh, provide different profiles depending on what you're looking for. However, now that I'm thinking about it, there is another type of beer that is a little bit different from these, and I'm gonna go get that right now. Now, there is another type of beer that I did not talk about because it's, it's a little bit different from the rest. Uh, and those are sour beers. So sour beers are a little bit more tart uh, than some of the other ones because they're made with a lot more of that, that fruitness that if you maybe have a couple of fruit flavored beers here, uh, you're still gonna get the same you know maltiness, hoppiness that you get on a traditional beer versus a sour beer you get more of the fruitness. That, that's what kind of shows up. Um, this one here is a blueberry pineapple orange uh, sour. So let's give this one a shot. And this one's from uh, Urban South um, in Houston. Ooh. Ah, that's tarty. That's tarty, all right. Ooh. Now I don't have orange juice often, but um, you make some scrambled eggs, some bacon, and you, uh, you throw this in a cup. I wouldn't know the difference. I mean, it's good. It tastes like orange juice with a little bit of pineapple. Um, if you like that, all power to you. You should probably try this one here. Anyways, we've, we've tried a different variety of beers today, and I hope you learned something, which was kind of the point of the video. Uh, we didn't do any ratings, we didn't do any like uh, pairings. This is mainly informative to show you the different types of beers that are out there. And for you to understand like, hey, if I go to the grocery uh, store next time, Maybe I'll pick out a different style of beer that I wouldn't have uh, before. So thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Share the love because we have more, more, more giveaways. And the holidays are coming up and it's exciting times. We're going to be having way more content for you during that time uh, that I hope you, you guys are going to love. So thank you guys again and stay hoppy, my friends.